Welcome to My Story, a program aimed at inspiring you to succeed. Today, we will bring you the story of Mrs. Chika Balogu, who despite the fact that her parents were able to provide all she needed, she still wanted much more than life had to offer. She is a mother, a philanthropist and a role model. She's presently the Director General of the National Institute for Hospitality and Tourism, Naiho Tour. So stay tuned as it promises to be educating and inspiring. Papa God bless you, no go pass you by. He go bless you, so tell them go ask you. Everybody in the say, you know, go drive home. Everybody just tell me how to. You know, I say, I like the phone, but I'm still up and them by. I'm in the middle of This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. My brothers and sisters, this is my story. My name is Chika Chukura Balogun. I'm the Director General for the National Institute for Hospitality and Tourism, Naiho Torres Wickhall, and this is my story. Mrs. Chika Balogun. Growing up for me um, was fantastic. Um, I come from a very small nuclear family, um, my parents and my younger brother and I. I was an only child for quite a little bit of time, so um, I got the best and the worst. The best because um, I'm not sure I lacked for anything, but again the worst because my mom was determined to make sure that I was everything rolled into one. I was a medical doctor, I was a lawyer, I was an engineer, I was a housekeeper, I was a wife, I was a mother. She wanted me to learn everything um, and there was no stopping her. Um, but I am very grateful today for all that effort that um, she put in at the time. Um, I went to primary school in Fountain, um, primary school in Surulere. I grew up in Lagos State. Um, and then went on to secondary school in Nubusa, a federal government college in Nubusa, um, university at um, University of Joss and, and, um, and onwards after that. Um, but my recollection of childhood was a lot of laughter, a lot of fun, um, a lot of discipline from my mom in particular. Um, but my father wouldn't um, speak so much but I probably think I was probably more in awe of him um, because he had very few words and those few words had better be positive words. The few times when they were not positive, I tell you I still remember those words till today. Um, but it was a wonderful, wonderful experience that taught me to be caring, um, that taught me to be very mindful of my environment. My mother has um, what we would call green hands. So I grew up with plants all over the house and um, had to tend gardens very early in the morning, um, meet the birds and all of those things. And um, I still have that as my reality till today. I am now probably worse than her in terms of um, taking to plants and, and, and all of that. We had dogs growing up, so I'm, I'm an animal lover as well. Um, but more than any of all of these things was um, the attribute um, to be a giver. My parents were absolute blessings and, and give us um, and, and still are till today and that is what I would um, say was the most impactful um, in my life growing up. They, they just taught me that you had to be selfless. Gardening is something that for her is almost um, synonymous with life and you had to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning 
for morning prayers after morning devotion, we had stepped out immediately to the garden. Um, we had days of the week mapped out. Some days were for pruning, um, uh, you know, dead leaves and, and thorns off of, off of. Some days were for turning the sod, like like she likes to call it, which is basically turning the soil and um, taking out all the worms and things inside of it. Some days were for putting new manure and fresh manure into into um, the garden, and we grew things. We grew um, plants that were ornamental, flowers and things like that, and we grew um, um, a vegetable patch. We had ugu, we had green, we had tomatoes, we had peppers, we had onions. We had you know all the, the basic things that you can very easily grow um, in a garden. I didn't particularly like it at the beginning because of course it means that your nails are all cracked up and everything. Um, but believe me, the sense of, of, uh, of um, excitement, the sense of fulfillment, especially when you see the buds spring up, that used to be for me like a miracle, the miracle of birth when a seed, a corn seed now pops up and you know, I, I would never, I used to wake up very early in the morning if we'd put seeds down and my mom tells me it would bud in about three days. The next day I was up. I needed to see that life, you know, um, um, being birth, you know. So um, for me, gardening and farming is something I would encourage everyone to get into, even if it was just a small, um, you know, garden, small garden out of pots. Gardening has become even better today. When, when I was growing up, we had to till the sod and do all of those things. Now, professional gardeners help you to do most of those things. So it's easy for you to buy your, your bag of compost and your bag of manure from a professional gardener and it makes it a lot easier for you at home. And you can plant tomatoes in pots. You can plant peppers in pots and, and serious quantities, but they now grow out of pots and then you create a vine using wood you know, uh, and, and to make branches so the tomatoes and, and, and peppers can hang off of them. So I'd still encourage my young kids to please, you know, um, get your hands dirty, get your hands in soil. It would be an experience you'd write to say thank you to me for. And I encourage parents as well, even if you lived in a flat, as long as there was a balcony, that you can put pots on that balcony, do something create a green environment. It's not also just about you. Remember that in planting that tree, in planting that little pot um, of vegetable or, or flower, you're helping to create a greener environment. And that's the only way we can sustain planet Earth. At the time, it would seem like um, cruel, like I'm sure most kids say today that you're not my mother. Um, I was one of those at a point I said my mother wasn't my mother because she you know, kept pushing me. Um, to do better and better and better. But at the time as a child, as I'm sure all children watching, watching this program would think, um, their mom was being very wicked or their dad was being very wicked, but I don't think so. When you're made to wash your clothes, um, when you're made to clean up your room, when you're made um, to clean the compound, to tend um, to your dog or cat or whatever you have, um, to do the gardening, um, to attend to neighbors, it was my mom went that far, um, in helping out with you know, um, chores that they had in their homes. Um, at the time, I thought it was a bit too much. At the time, I thought she was being very wicked. But today I look back and I realize that the strengths I have today were all formed then. So I wouldn't say there was any particular chore that um, I would today, with hindsight, think was wrong. It's just at the time, I thought it was a bit too much. So I do encourage um, children and youth who are watching, including my children, that um, it's really never too much. It's all for your good and you'll be very grateful to your mom in the future for it. My mom has been a hard worker, um, so I, I grew up realizing that you had to work hard. There were no free gifts. Um, you were, you know, congratulated when you did things right and, and all of that. But it didn't even bring me up with a system of um, you'd be given something because you did something right. No, you did what you did right because it was right to do it. There wasn't a gift system. You were encouraged, you were praised, but not that you were given a gift because you got high grades. My mom would tell you that she paid the school fees and you had better come back home with high grades. Um, so, and, and they taught me to work hard. That, um, I think, got into me to the point where I realized there were no handouts. Um, you had to work um, generally for, for anything that you earned. So in the university, just towards the tail end of the university, I started wanting more, you know, than, than my parents would give me. 
um, in terms of, uh, of money and I realized that wait a minute there was nothing wrong with me why couldn't I work you know and, and being an Igbo woman um, business <laughs> business was the most um, uh, easy thing to to naturally flow into so I started I started going to um, the Lafia area of Plata State um, I hope it's still in Plata State maybe Nassara State now um, to buy yams and tomatoes you know in trucks and bring down to Lagos and um, sell and made a, a tidy bit of profit as well so I am proud of that um, uh, beginning um, for me and I do encourage young children to think outside the box save um, some of the prop, um, pocket money that your parents give you and and start something it could be the beadwork you're very good at it could be knitting you're very good at I mean the, the art of knitting is almost lost right now in Nigeria completely so I'd love to see young kids get back into knitting cardigans you know doing things like that and, and begin to sell some of these things to your mother's friends to, to your neighbors to your classmates you'd be surprised at the tidy sum that you're able to um, um, save up in a very short time. The Word of God um, drives me um, all the time. Um, the fact that I, I was blessed with parents who set the right example for me um, and, and um, I absolutely don't want to disappoint God first of all and then my parents. Um, there's so many stories of things I could have done um, wrong you know when it was a choice path and I chose the good path because I didn't want you know um, bad news to come back to my parents um, so in terms of motivation that has been a foundational motivation for me to always you know um, aspire to be the best because God called me to be the best um, for I say I'm, I'm God's favorite princess um, and if he's given me that power then it would be shortchanging God if if I didn't um, live up to the expectations you know but then I also motivation changes um, depends on, on, on the cycle of, of your life at the time when you start to have kids again wanting to be a good example to your children again wanting to set high standards and high bar of a high bar for your kids and even moving that bar um, higher all the time um, has also been a, a motivating factor for me and then Again, in terms of work, in terms of influence, you also realize that you do have a lot of people looking up to you. You have the young ones um, that are not necessarily your kids looking up to you. You have colleagues looking up to you. You have friends you know, looking up to you. And you have people you don't even know, know about you who are watching what you do. And um, these things, um, to my mind, always resonate somewhere and keeps me in check and you know, makes me always review um, my standards for the year 2016, for instance, and determined to improve in the year 2017. So I'm not necessarily waiting for someone to tell me to do better. I constantly try to raise the bar personally for myself to do better. And in doing better, it automatically encourages my children, my family, and people who, who look up to me. I am particularly blessed um, to have had um, a wonderful, wonderful childhood. Um, parents who loved me, um, parents who could afford um, a good education, uh, you know, a, a close knit family system um, that worked. And I do realize that that's not the experience for every child. Um, there are terrible things that happen out there to, to children. Um, there are kids who lose their parents very early on in life. There are kids who don't even know who their parents are, whether they're alive or, or, or dead. So the challenges that, that occur in people's lives very early on, um, I'm blessed not to have had uh, any of those major issues. But I do believe that um, we must learn to let go of the past if we expect the future to be any better. The past is what it is, it's past is history. Um, it's only for review, so you don't make the mistakes of the past. Either some people say my father um, was a drunk or is a drunk, then to my mind, that's enough right there for you never to drink. You know, we shouldn't repeat the mistakes of the past and say, oh, because my father was, I, I don't accept that. It's an individual race. Um, on the last day, God is not going to ask you about A, B, Y, and C. He's going to ask you about yourself. So be determined, regardless of the sadness and of, of your growing up years, regardless of a, um, a possibility of a lack of education, because there is nobody to pay for you. Be determined that you could still be the best lawyer, the best doctor. It's in you 
it's not about anybody else. The life might have dealt you um, lemons. It's up to you to decide to say, ah, or to make nice tasting lemonade with, with the cards that life has dealt you. So I would encourage every young person. I feel, you know, um, uh, the pain and understand that some of those things were terrible, but I would encourage you to just keep those things um, aside and, and make the best of your life. Your life is yours. It's not the past. Your life is here and now. Make the best of it. This is my story. Uncle, please tell us a story. In the locality, I become a local champion there that if they come to the shop, they didn't see me, nobody could make her hair. I want to be a lawyer in the future by the grace of God. Life is a testimony. During my own time, from my story, I could be referred to as the house head in my house. I'd like to speak to the Nigerian youth. This Nigeria is yours for the taking. This Nigeria is a white board and it's for you, the youth of Nigeria, to write what you want to see Nigeria be. I encourage all of you to seek to be educated, educate your mind, to seek to get trained in new skills, to believe in the value and the dignity of labor and to determine to be the very best in a good thing all the days of your life. I encourage you to rewrite the history of Nigeria for the better. Some cultures still um, have been able to hold on to passing on their the strong cultural values to the young ones, more so than other um, ethnic um, groups in Nigeria. So for those of them who have held on to their culture and have passed it down very well, I would say very big well done to them. Um, for instance, in the North, I find that um, the younger kids from the North hold on to their cultural beliefs, um, you know, maybe more than a lot of the um, ethnic um, groups. Um, but in general, I'll say no. The youths are not um, holding on to the culture, even when they're being taught, even when the parents are making effort. Um, I find a lot of attitudinal um, indifference um, coming out of them. They all think they know more. And some of that influence comes out of a good thing because ICT is a good thing, the internet is a good thing, but with every good thing comes challenges. And I think part of the reasons why we're having cultural challenges um, is because um, the WWW is right here and it's bringing its own influence on the youth. Um, cultures from other parts of the world, especially the pop culture, um, has come to fight our traditional values and cultures here. So I do believe that it's up to us parents especially, and schools, um, to keep our culture alive, to realize that first of all you're Nigerian and it's not a mistake, you're Nigerian by God's divine reasoning. Um, you should be proud of being Nigerian, so as, as a parent, bring up your children um, with the knowledge of their culture. Language is very critical. A lot of us, and, and, and I, when I say us, I include myself, I haven't done very well in making sure that our children speak our um, native languages as their first language. English is very good. English is a universal language, but it is not our traditional first languages. And so why is it that you know, our kids can't speak Yoruba, can't speak Igbo. I think the houses do a lot better than us, but some can't even speak Hausa as well. The minority languages are the same. In fact, I hear Igbo will be extinct, you know, in, in quite a number of years if we're not serious about, um, uh, you know, um, getting our younger ones to, to learn the language. So I, I think the fault lies with my generation more than anything, where we, we imbibe the pop culture. We learned languages from our parents, but we have not insisted and taught our children the language. Um, you come to all our homes where all speaking the best of English and there seems to be a competition between you know who speaks the, the, the you know whose grammar is most correct and who 
you know, can speak American or British uh, um, um, English, rather than who can speak Yoruba, and not just Yoruba, the Ijebu dialect, the Jesha dialect, or who is an Igbo person and can speak Igbo but can speak the Onitsha dialect, or the Oweri dialect, you know, and all of those things. So I would encourage um, um, the young ones to please forgive us, you know, um, to err is um, human. You know, forgive us and make it a point of duty to learn the culture of your people, first of all, and then other ethnic groups in Nigeria. You will be proud you did. One of the fundamental um, things I, 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 I hold very dear to, to my heart would be education. Um, there's a standing joke in my office that if you, if you wanted to get money off of me, come tell me a story about a kid that needs you know, to, to pay school fees or go to school. Um, I run a charity uh, with my mom and um, a few other board members, and it's for widows, um, orphaned and destitute children and families, and also um, regenerating of um, local community schools. Um, for me, the whole of what we do at Goldcrest Family Center, for me, the, the part that makes the most sense to me as an individual is education of young minds and the regeneration of schools because I believe that we're all products of our environment. So for me, it's a lot, lifelong desire to continuously change the learning environment of young people. I would encourage everyone to seek to get an education education in formal classrooms or informal setting, it doesn't matter. An education is an education. Get your mind trained. And for those of us who can help, who are in positions um, to be a blessing to, to other people, come meet. Come meet. It might be difficult, but commit to sending a child to school this year. You'll be amazed at the joy you'd feel that next year you might send 10. Let's make an individual commitments to make a difference. One person, one community at a time. Join us in, in regenerating local schools, changing their school environment, change, giving them libraries, giving them ICT labs, so that kids who would never have seen the internet, at least at that age, are able to see the world come to them because you were able to provide um, an ICT environment for them in their local school. Um, I take away education. My father was very particular about education, and so was my mom. My mom um, is a nurse by training. My father is a lawyer by training. And for both of them, the best gift they could give to me was education. Um, and I'm very grateful to them for that. Um, and that as well is the best gift I am given to my children, education. Um, so for those of you who are in school right now, I'd encourage you to please take it serious. Um, it's a gift that you wouldn't understand. It has no price tag to it. There's a saying that your brain is the only thing that crosses borders without a visa. Your brain moves with you as long as you're alive. Your brain goes across every border with you. You could sit in Nigeria and train people in the United States of America simply because you have it up there. I'd encourage people um, to take every opportunity to retrain their minds at all times. Um, hard work. I, I, I grew up in an environment where my mom was the matron of, of the hospital at the time and she would um, have shifts and sometimes would have to cover for some of her nurses who had um, personal issues and couldn't come um, to work. And my dad at the time was um, setting up certain companies for um, a very big um, uh, Nigerian family at the time. So he was also all over the world, all over the place, traveling and, 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 and working. So I don't know if I could ever have learned laziness because it just is not in my genes and it wasn't in my growing up environment. Um, so I'd encourage people to learn that hard work pays. Hard work is the only thing that you have control of in terms of the dividend or the results that will come out of it. And no matter how tedious the work, hard work pays. And if you're like me and you, you like to, um, your mind works in terms of projects, then choose to work within an environment where you, you, you stagger your work into projects. Um, so that there's a beginning and an end and then you move to the next thing, if you're like me. But some people are also people who want to see something from the beginning and all through their lives they're, they're working at it. But whatever it is, work very, very, very hard. You can't learn hard work when you're all grown up. Hard work is something you imbibe, is a culture that you must imbibe um, growing up. 
and and I'd encourage you to be detailed. Be detailed about what you do. Be precise about what you do. Um, you can't work hard in a scattered sense. Um, at the end of the day, you're very tired, but what's the productivity? So always review your productivity. Always review it. You can do it daily, but I think that's too much. Um, I do a weekly review of, of uh, my productivity level. And pat yourself on the back when you've done very well. And then give yourself a pep talk as well when you tell yourself you haven't been the best you could be this week. And aim again for a better and a higher week the next week. But if you get an education, if you train yourself, you believe in God, you have faith, and you work hard, definitely you'll be everything you want to be and much more. And that's it on my story today. For your comments and suggestions, please send a text or WhatsApp message to 0806-004-2843. Thank you for staying tuned.